Miotida National Park is unique, not only because it is home to over 50 species of rare birds, but because it is divided by the demarcation line. Of the 20,000 hectares in 2014, after the occupation of Novazovsk, half ended up in territory not controlled by the Ukrainian government. Winter bird counts can be even worse, but at least they are carried out at a specific time, no matter the weather. Alexander Bronskov has worked at Miotida since it opened as a national park. He heads the scientific department, but birds are his real passion. Once a week he observes which birds are nesting or migrating through the national park. He worries about Miotida's fate, which the war has divided. This is the most famous Laridae family bird colony in Krivakosaspid. I'm an ornithologist. There, on the other side, there are also some good interesting steps. They have always been there. They created some organization there that is guarded. Some of our employees work there, and we're very grateful to them that they, despite all these events, make effort to preserve this. After the invasion, Miotida's administration ended up in the occupied area, in Krivakosa. The team only had time to gather a small part of their extensive archives and other important documents. In 2015, militants shot a video clip at Miotida about their so-called Navarasia sea fleet. At least the poaching has stopped a little bit. And those fishermen who used to go fishing in Krivakosa, directly in the areas where the bird colonies inhabit, are no longer allowed there. Thanks to that, at least one pair of Dalmatian pelicans managed to breed this year. The two years before this, they didn't nest because there were too scared. The park currently has 30 employees in total. They get around the park using their own vehicles, and they also have to pay for the petrol out of their own pockets. Their office is located near the Azov Battalion base in an abandoned clinic in the village of Urzuf. Together with volunteers, they gather furniture and brought in old computers from home. They're neighboured by the Azov Battalion and the border guards. Pretty much all of the border checkpoints are located in our territory. Of course it's bad when in that certain period before a leadership change, and when the new leader arrives, we have to go to them and explain who we are, what we are doing, and explain that it's not us who have come to them, but they are the ones on our territory. The director says, in the three years of military action, the park's employees have been inspected twice. They were checking for separatists and called people in for questioning. Miotida scientists still cannot obtain the land management project. It would serve as an official proof of the fact that the territory is a nature reserve. Now they're planning to hand these lands of rare plants and birds over to the military. We want our defenders to have land, but we don't think this should be done at the expense of nature, where there are valuable natural complexes. Firstly, it would destroy these nature complexes. Secondly, in two or three years' time, the park's land would stop providing life. The park's scientists have appealed to the local councils, regional administrations and the Ministry of Ecology numerous times. But the response is always the same. There is no time for ecology during war. If we give up on nature now, if we don't take care of it, then there will be nothing left when the war is over. There will simply be nowhere to live.